Well, I'm excited this week as we deal with the topic of simplicity. It's a topic that often we may not talk about a lot, but it needs to be because it is powerful and it is beautiful. Now, how do we define simplicity? Here's one way to do it. Here's a quote from George MacDonald. He said this, he said, to have what we want is riches, but to do without is power. Now, just consider that statement, which I believe is so true. Again, to have what we want is riches, but to be able to do without that, that's power. Why, why? Because when you're able to do without, with to be living the life of simplicity or to be content with less, you are staring really in the face of the system of the world and you are saying, my value is not in stuff. My value is not in what possessions I have around me. My value, my identity is actually not of this world. It's of another world. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ. Another saying I've been very fond of is this, the more you own, the more it owns you. So hear that as well. The more we own, the more we can come caught up with the world around us and the more it owns us and distracts us from the greatest purpose we have, which is following and finding life in the Lord Jesus Christ. So consider then simplicity, biblical simplicity, Christ-centered simplicity allows us to live with power for him who truly leads us to life. So I suggest to you now then, simplicity, hear me, is wisdom. The wise man, the wise woman will grow in simplicity to free them to live for eternal treasures. Consider Psalm 49, verses 16 to 19. Here's what it says right here. This is such a powerful truth on this subject. It says this, Be not afraid when a man becomes rich. When the glory of his house increases, see, what are we learning right here about earthly riches? Don't be jealous of them. Don't be afraid when others seem to have so much and you don't. The Bible tells us explicitly here, don't be afraid when someone else becomes rich. The Bible continues, verse 17, for when he dies, he will carry nothing away. His glory will not go down after him. What are we learning? Earthly riches will not last. Don't live for something that won't last. It doesn't make any sense. Wisdom says, I live for what does last. Verse 18, the text goes on. For through why he lives, he counts himself blessed. And though you get praise, you do well for yourself. The Bible saying this is saying, this is actually a false blessing. Earthly treasures are false blessings. We think that's all there is. No, 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 no. There's so much more to live for. And then finally, verse 19, his soul will go down to the generation of his fathers. Listen, listen, who will never again see light. Wow. See what the Bible's telling us here? The Bible says earthly riches don't get to heaven. Loved ones, live for what lasts. Believe in the power of simplicity and investing in the kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is where it's so beautiful. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants to say to us right now. This is why David said in the Psalms 2, he said this, you have put more joy in my heart than when their grain and wine abound. See what's happening here? Jesus Christ brings joy. Jesus Christ is the one who allows us to be satisfied and find life. That's the power of simplicity. Maybe you're out there right now, you're watching and you're listening and Jesus Christ is speaking to you and you want to know more and you need help. Call our prayer lines today and we can guide you into relationship with Jesus Christ where life is truly found and the chaos and the clutter of the world fade away and the life in Jesus Christ is forever seen. Maybe so, you are so loved today on 100 Huntley Street.